Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and you're right. We do and have a great track record of working together on WERDA, and we're gonna continue that as we move into the next year. So I welcome our witnesses. Um, I, in my short conversation with Mr. Haig, I particularly work, welcome my fellow West Virginian. You need to hear this. He's from Charleston, West Virginia, and is a proud graduate of Capitol High School. So thank you for coming and, and being a part of this, as, as all of you, but a special shout out to my West Virginian. And if you didn't see it last night, which I know um, Senator Ricketts was there, we, we lit the Christmas tree. Uh, the Capitol Christmas tree, the people's Christmas tree, which came from the Mon Forest in West Virginia. And I have just now thought out from watching that because it was so cold out there. Um, anyway, since 2014, we have kept to the biennial schedule of passing bipartisan legislation that authorizes water resources and studies and projects. WERDA also sets national policies for the civil works program of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and I look forward to continuing that track record, as I said. This summer, Chairman Carper and I, and he mentioned this in his opening remarks, sent a letter to our Senate colleagues soliciting their request for WERDA 2024. Insight, um, wait a minute here, I think I got my pages out. Yes, I appreciate the, eight, the efforts of our Senate colleagues to submit their proposals for our consideration, and I'm pleased to say we have a significant, we received a significant number of requests, m more than the last time, which demonstrates the strong interest in and necessity of this legislation. I've said previously it's important that any word of bill supports the timely and efficient delivery of water resource projects while continuing to meet national priorities. Flexibility is key to ensuring that the Corps can identify and carry out solutions that are tailored to address the needs and individual needs of our communities. Our nation's water resources challenges are diverse, and communities know more about their unique needs than the policymakers here in Washington. We must also continue to preserve the role of non-federal sponsors in the project delivery process and maintain the Corps' focus on its primary mission areas, navigation, flood and coastal uh, storm risk management, and ecosystem restoration. Insight from our non-federal sponsors on their experiences with completed and ongoing projects help inform what, if any, modifications are needed to the Corps' authorities. Today we'll discuss, as the Chairman said, Project Partnership Agreements, PPAs. In, a, in general, PPAs are legal documents between the Corps and a non-federal sponsor for construction of an authorized water resources project. These agreements describe the project and the responsibilities of each party. The Corps has undertaken efforts to simplify this process for, for executing PPAs by standardizing model agreements and issuing guidance for certain types of projects. The Corps also considers deviations from the model agreement on a case-by-case -case basis. However, federal law requires certain provisions to be included in the PPAs, limiting what modifications the Corps is able to consider in some instances. One of those statutorily request, required provisions is known as the Hold and Save Clause. This provision, mandated by WERDA 1986, requires non-federal sponsors to hold and save the United States free from damages due to the construction or operation and maintenance of the project, except for damages due to fault or negligence. PPAs also describe the operation, maintenance, repair, replacement, and rehabilitation, or O&M, responsibility of the federal government and non-federal sponsors. O&M responsibilities vary with project purpose. For certain projects, the non-federal sponsor will be responsible for O&M activities in perpetuity, regardless of the useful life of the project. Some stakeholders have indicated that certain required language in PPAs can delay the execution of these agreements. A delay can only extend the construction timeline and potentially and probably would lead to increased costs. This hearing will provide us an opportunity to learn more about these concerns and listen to proposed solutions. We'll also highlight how non-federal sponsors have successfully negotiated PPAs with the Corps. As we have this discussion today, it's important to remember that these projects require significant federal investment in order to be realized. Ultimately, we must assure that any changes to PPAs appropriately balance each party's risks. I want to thank our witnesses today for sharing these uh, their perspectives on this topic. I would say anecdotally that in discussing this, the topic of our uh, hearing today, somebody said it's in the weeds. You know, it's 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 very wonkish as to what uh, what we're talking about and how this is going to um, finally shake out in our word or bill. But I would say, as we look at the map of the United States, 
every project that's done, whether it's done through a PPA or not, is absolutely essential to the safety and the environmental um, prosperity of every part of our country. So if the weeds aren't right, the projects aren't going to be right, and the results are not going to be right. So uh, I think that highlights how important a hearing like this is today, and I thank the witnesses for coming. Thank you.